What is the Chinese-British Expedition in Tibet? The Chinese-British Expedition in Tibet is a historical event that took place on 17 May 1903. It is the first time that the British government sent a diplomatic expedition to China. The British government sent an expedition to China with the aim of negotiating for trade and establishing diplomatic relations. The Chinese government was not interested in these negotiations, so they refused to meet with them. The British expedition left without any result and returned home. The British decided to send a second expedition with the same goal. The Chinese government agreed to meet this new delegation, but they were more interested in negotiation than the first one. The British decided to sign a treaty with these other two delegations after they had reached an agreement with the Chinese. This then made it possible for China to accept the terms offered by the British, and they signed a treaty in 1842. To this day, China has not recognized any European country as its own nation. The treaty, however, was poorly received in the United States. In fact, some Americans believe that this treaty would ultimately lead to more trade and diplomacy with China than other European nations would be able to offer. His efforts were not fruitless as Hawaii became a United States territory in 1900 and then the 50th state in 1959. The Treaty of Wangshou was signed by the United States and China on June 18, 1844. The treaty was negotiated by former President John Tyler, who was authorized to present a treaty at the U.S. China Treaty Congress being held in Shanghai, which had replaced Canton as the United States' first diplomatic post with China. The treaty provided for the United States to intervene on behalf of the Chinese against any aggression from the British or other foreign powers. It also allowed for American vessels to enter Chinese ports without paying duties and provided that China would not impose import duties on American products. The United States and Britain signed the Treaty of Wangia in 1785, and was ratified on May 27, 1844. To end a war between their two countries over British support for Chinese rebels fighting the Qing dynasty. The treaty made China subject to foreign trade, which had been prohibited under previous treaties. In 1891, George William Stowe was sent with a team of British expedition led by British explorer Francis Young Husband to explore the remote Tibetan region. Stowe's team is forced to leave the main party and go back to Lhasa in disguise when the Emperor of Tibet ordered it. They are forced to turn back to the British expedition, but do not see them for nearly three weeks. The wayfarer finds that the high priest of Tantrist has a very small retinue, consisting chiefly of one aged lama and two young women. He does not find the country altered by the presence of strangers. Lamaism has a place for representations of the Buddha, with which it is not likely to part. A number of Lamas consider that images serve to concentrate the consecrated objects more efficaciously, and they think that this should be done in buildings dedicated to worship. Images are put up in the temples, and before them are set up pictures of cherubs, who, according to the Lamas, represent their power. The place of these images is generally taken from the old mythology by which they were represented. The Chinese Missions in Tibet the Buddhist faith and some days of its festival season are usually distinguished by charms or talismans as well as by images and pictures. In Tibet religious talismans are made of various kinds of metals and precious stones, such as turquoises, jasper or agates. The images are usually made in the form of a human-headed bull with the body and tail of a serpent. In Tibet less is said about spirits than in China. The people believe in them so implicitly that any attempt to contradict their opinions is treated with scorn. The Tibetans are very fond of the game of chess, which they call sarki and has no equal in Asia. The chessboard is made from a flat piece of wood where the squares have been cut out. The two players take their places opposite each other, 174 each on his square and at a distance according to the rules. The pieces are in the form of men and animals, some having their names painted on their sides, others are called by their own names. There is a king, who moves as if he were a man with a horse's tail, but can also be made to move as if he were an elephant, there is also a queen. How did China and Britain collaborate on their measures following their expedition to Tibet? In 1842, Britain and China collaborated on their measures following their expedition to Tibet. The first step towards this collaboration was the Treaty of Wangia in 1842. This treaty was signed by the British and Chinese governments with a view to improving bilateral relations. This treaty was an agreement between Britain and China that both countries would refrain from any military action against each other in Tibet, 
which is located in China. This agreement helped establish the border between British India and Tibet, which is still currently recognized by both countries as the boundary line between them. The Treaty of Wangia also helped establish diplomatic relations between Britain and China for the first time ever. The British East India Company had traded with Tibet since 1793. With the annexation of Tibet into the Qing dynasty, Britain began to establish relations with China in 1859 and was provided a treaty by China. The treaty outlined that both countries would refrain from any military action against each other in Tibet and if either country were attacked, they would jointly assist one another in case of war. The treaty outlined that if either country were attacked, they would jointly assist one another in case of war. During the Boxer Rebellion, Britain's representatives to Tibet advised the Tibetan military that they would support China if an attack occurred but ultimately did not. After the rebellion, Britain began to demand in a series of diplomatic notes that China cede its sovereignty over Tibet and allow for British trade in Tibet as part of a larger imperialistic agenda. Britain was initially reluctant to take part in the war and only did so after it became clear that Germany was going to send an expeditionary force to Tibet. The British did not want to get involved in an open war with China over Tibet but realized that their presence could keep China from invading Tibet. Britain was primarily interested in using Tibet as a strategic bargaining chip with Germany. The British did not have any intention of granting Tibet independence or sovereignty after the war. They used Tibet for its strategic importance to keep Germany from invading and enslaving it. China's invasion and occupation of Tibet in October 1950, when the British colonial power withdrew from India, was a major blow to Britain. The Chinese army captured Lhasa on October 21 and established a foothold in Tibet by November 10. The Chinese made it clear that the British withdrawal from Tibet meant that the road to India was open. The British were unsuccessful in stopping the Chinese army, who entered Tibet through Nepal. Stay tuned for part 2 of the secrets of the end of British expedition to Tibet and don't forget to subscribe to my channel please. Thank you.